In this tutorial, we'll be introducing RayTK, which is a toolkit of operators for Touch Designer that lets you build ray marching scenes and other types of shaders without having to write any code. This is an updated version of the original intro tutorial that uses a more recent version of the toolkit. To get started, go to the RayTK repository on GitHub. There is a link in the video description. Go to the releases page, now, the source files that are in the repository are intended for development purposes. So if you just want to start using the toolkit, check out the releases instead. But if you're curious about how the toolkit is built, feel free to take a look through the source. Under the latest release, download the talks file. We'll be using version 0.23, but a newer version might be available when you're watching this. So drag the talks into your project and the whole toolkit is contained in that talks file that you downloaded. It can be dropped anywhere into a project in a supported version of Touch Designer, but it can cause problems if you have multiple copies in a single project. Once you've created a scene, you can use the scene without needing the main toolkit talks, but some editing features depend on having the toolkit loaded. In general, you won't need to go inside the toolkit or the components that it creates unless you're curious about how they work. The palette is a tool that lets you create various types of operators from the toolkit. It's equivalent to Touch Designer's built-in create dialog. To open the palette, use the keyboard shortcut Alt-R. So the palette lists the available operators grouped into categories. Below the operator is a search bar where you can type in the name of an operator and it will filter the list based on what you've typed in. There are also some toggle buttons to show or hide beta operators, which are operators that are kind of still in development, um, but are generally still usable, or deprecated operators, which have been replaced by more recent versions. There's also the help panel, which you can expand, and you can see a description of the operator that's selected in the list. At the top of the palette, there's a pin button, which will keep it open after you've created an operator, and because by default, it will close immediately after you create an operator or move your mouse outside of it. Start by creating a box frame SDF operator. Box frame SDF, like most operators in RayTK, is an example of a ROP. These are kind of like their own family of operators, like chops or dats. The box frame doesn't output geometry, though. It outputs a definition which describes the shape. The details of that aren't really important at this point, but just note that you can't directly view the SDF without creating another operator to render it. Output operators, or renderers, are a special type of ROP. They take in one or more definitions of ROPs and use them to build a shader and run it in a top to produce image outputs. Create a Raymarch Render 3D. Connect the box frame SDF to the first input, the SDF scene input on the renderer, and then add a top to the end to see the output. So you can see there how it's rendering the box frame with some shading on it. And try adjusting the scale, translate, and thickness parameters on the box frame and see how it changes the image. By default, the renderer uses a built-in camera. If you want to change the view, you're going to need to create a camera operator. Open the palette again and create a look at camera. Connect it to the second input, the camera input on the renderer. 
can then try adjusting the position of the camera and see how the viewport changes. You can also use the FOV angle to get a wider view so you can see the whole shape. Similar to the camera, by default, the renderer uses a built-in light source. To change it, we'll need to attach a different light operator. Open the palette again and create a point light operator. Connect it to the third input, the light input on the renderer. Then adjust the position to something like 1, 1.5, 2. And as you're moving the light around, you can notice how you get shadows rendered by default. And that's our scene. So we've got an SDF operator that is defining a shape and a renderer that is using it to produce an image. We've then got a camera and a light operator to customize the view and the lighting. Try creating different types of SDFs and connecting them to this first input on the renderer. Note that only the first input on the renderer is used for SDFs. If you want to combine multiple SDFs in a single scene, we're going to need what's called a combine operator, which will be covered in a later tutorial. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and feel free to reach out on Instagram or in the Touch Designer Discord. There are links to all of those things in the video description.